My name is Matt, welcome back to the shop. And today, um, I said we're going to do more and more about valves, camshafts and the entire head system. So what I want to talk about is um, this whole flow thing. So here I have a um, R3, Yamaha R3 airbox. There's a reason why I have this thing. Um, and we'll get to that. But it was whilst I was doing this and some of the comments that people had said, out dog! Some of the comments that people had said, um, it kind of pointed me towards um, an aspect that people automatically assume. So, um, yeah, that's that. So what you do is, is that everybody knows that if you have um, some valve seats, uh, fucking wrong way, what's wrong with me today? Valve seats like this. This is a cross section. Some valve seats like that. And you then have a valve that comes down like this. It might have a dimple in it or something, whatever. Something like that, right? And everyone knows that what you do is you measure the uh, circumference so you measure the circumference around the valve which is uh, the diameter of the or d times pi right that's what your diameter is you can't fucking see anything which is a problem there we go is that better that's better so yeah um, so that's how you work out your circumference and then what you do is you work out your um, so from there straight down to there is your lift. So this is your lift. In this case for the R3 stuff that I'm doing at the moment, the diameter is 26 millimeters for the intake valve and the lift is eight millimeters. Right, so once you do all this, you work out your diameter and your height. So basically what you're trying to do is you are trying to make a cylinder in a sense, like that, yeah. So you're trying to find out the circumference around that circle and then you times it by your, your length in a sense there, right? So what you get when you do all this is you get 6.5352 centimeters squared. That is the area that the air can pass through and everyone goes, oh, right, cool. So when I do that, right, um, and I times this by fucking whatever, you know what I mean? Um, get this circumference and times it by the area, and the circumference for this is 8.169 centimetres. Once I do this, I can work out that and then look at my um, port diameters, and I can work out all my... Well, it's not that simple. And... Where's my bloody cloth gone? Let me explain why it's not that simple. It's actually really difficult. And this is one of these things where we use that as a very basic average. And this is why we always have to test. So I was chatting to a guy uh, in the comments about floor benches and floor benches are almost absolutely useless. <laughs> Now, I know a lot of people are going to kick off, but they are, and we're going to build one, and I'm going to show you why they are, um, well, pretty much useless, especially for, for heads, for cylinder heads. But regardless, let's just take your... Um, valve seat like that. And then let's look at your valve. It comes down here like this. And then we have the mating surface seat there. Bit of an edge, and we're just gonna do that. All right, we're just gonna do that. And we're just gonna call that halfway, yeah? So we're just looking at this section. And then we also have a port. Let's just say that bit of this port goes straight up, All right? Like this. Now, if we look, if we just imagined that our thing was laminar flow, right? So, all of our flow is like this, right? All of our atoms, all of our molecules in our air are flowing around like this, yeah? Or 
close to that. Not the fucking chaotic fucking bullshit that it is. You know what I mean? Not this fucking nonsense where it just goes like this. And it's fucking everywhere. What we call turbulent flow. Right, it's just a fucking mess. Let's just say it's all laminar. And the reason why we have to, in a sense, assume that is because we're trying to use a direct measurement or a linear measurement. So if we look at it from our air's point of view, and let's just say, um, you know, we're going in straight lines. As we come down here, we follow the contours like that into the cylinder. Yeah? So that's the way we've been directed by the air. And then just say if some air is coming down this way like this, and it's coming straight across us like this. So we've got this going on, right? So if you look at that, that is not this measurement. So this measurement is from here to here. That's what we usually measure. That's our lift, right? That's our lift there, which was eight millimeters in this case, right? That's what our lift would be. This, that's how much it's just gone straight down, how much it's opened. But if you look, it's not that. This air is coming out from the seat. If it's not coming out from this, just if it followed the seat perfectly, let's get rid of that. If it followed the seat perfectly, just get rid of that writing. Oh, fucking hell, there's the microphone. If it followed the seat perfectly, like this, and went that way, across there, then, we're still short, this is tiny, this is, we, we cut off an awful lot. So what I did was, is I took some measurements across here, so from the edge of the seat there to where it hits the valve profile there. And here's a picture of that, and I actually used the cross-section drawings from the R3 manual, and um, basically scaled it all so it's the exact size. And then basically just cut across it. What is this cross section where it actually looks at it from? And it's basically about this big. Now you've got two different diameters there or two different lengths there, depending which way you want to look at it. But basically you can have what equates to, because this is now part of a cone, you can have to what equates to a, um, a, a, a lift of 5.07 or what equates to a lift of 6.74. These are not the lifts that you're expecting. This eight millimeter lift you've got here, because these two surfaces are coming apart like this. There's your eight millimeters, but the air's coming in or out because of the way the valve is and the port is and so on and so forth. When you look at stuff like that, this is, 30, is minus 36% of what you had, and this is minus 18. The fact of the matter is, is they are not the areas that you worked out. When you look at your uh, intake tracks like this for your um, airbox, that is a circle, right? And you only have the diameter, and that is the area that you see. When you look at these snorkel things, and you work out the areas of these, that is the area you see. But when it comes to the valve, it's completely different. It's not only that, right? It's a bit weirder than that. This is the only way I can easily demonstrate the problem that you face if you are trying to calculate these things. And this is why the numbers are always off. This is why we always need to test things. Because it's just... <laughs> It's just, that's just it, you know. So if people are shaving tiny bits or putting tiny bits of fucking cement, you know, bloody JB weld in the ports and thinking that they know what they're doing, they're just fucking guessing because they're thinking I'm 2D. The problem is, is this, is that your um, poppet valves like this for your intake, just say, and then it's like... You'll have a port like this, right, with a fucking seat like this. Just as a pent roof like that. The air, oh fucking hell, I've done this well wrong. I wasn't looking what I was bloody doing. There, yeah, so it's there like that, right. A fucking pent roof, what the fuck am I doing? Right, it's like that. Yeah, just say. When we're looking at this uh, example, with air... Uh, and then the edge of your port like that with air flowing out either that direction or that direction 
and basically clouting into each other and creating a lot of turbulence, but also the cross section of that, not the cross section of that, is that you might have, all right, so you might have this weird little cross section thing you've gone for, which is smaller than your lift, but this air is clouting straight into the side of a cylinder wall where this air, air is a bit more free to just be deflected. And whichever way you cross section these valves, you are going to get a different flow path. The other thing is as well, is if we think of a valve as three dimensional, so your port is like this, it's all just not laminar, like we all basically, oh, that's a, I'm doing too much here, I'm too much drawing. If we look at a um, valve as a three dimensional entity, you know, so basically we've got this going on and it's got a gap like that to get through. You know, you're falling out of the valve. This is all solid. You know what I mean? And this is the opening. The air doesn't just go like so. Let's pick the valve stem. Let's just pick the 12. So 12, 6, 3 and 9 like that. The floor doesn't go six down the valve and out, and the nine go across the valve and out, and the three goes like that, and the twelve's on the other side of the valve. Oh, fucking God, no. You'll come from the nine o'clock position, swim around and just go that way, or go from the nine o'clock position and just fuck off that way, or from the twelve o'clock position, do a bloody spiral and fuck off that way, or from the three, pop out that way. It's chaotic. It's a chaotic system. So you could say, you could pick from there to there and say, look at that cross-sectional area, <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Or from the smallest points, but the smallest points is what you would think you were doing, which is valve lift, aren't the smallest points. The point is, with all these points, the point to all of this is that it is incredibly hard to try and calculate anything. So just by saying the area equals the circumference, um, you know, just times by the lift, and then doing calculations like that is gonna get you marginally in the ballpark, but it's not telling you anything, right? It's just not. And uh, you know, if if you if you change your valves, because people reckon that they can use the circumference and the port size to work out lift. It's just not like that. This is why there are engine research facilities where they will try a multitude of lifts. They will have 25 cams and they will go through them all at each rev range because then you get all this Helmholtz shit going on, all these pressure waves, all this kind of crap. And the fact of the matter is, is you can't, you just can't. You've just got to pick one, right? You've just got to pick one RPM range and aim for that. And that's usually where your peak torque is and roundabout where you'd want your gear in and stuff like that as well. So that's why all this variable stuff of trying to get everything fucking perfect, it's just not possible. Just aim for a big fucking number and then have your gearbox try and stay in the rev range. That's what it's about. And we'll get on to um, floor benches and why they're pretty much useless in a later video with some demos and stuff like that. For the time being, I hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.